Okay, so we know from their most recent delivery numbers that Tesla is continuing to grow at a pretty spectacular pace. Vehicle deliveries are up 20% from Q2 to Q3 and up 73% in Q3 2021 over Q3 2020. It's staggering growth for a company that makes a product as complex as an electric car. But when you look at Tesla in terms of companies that sell cars, they're still very small fish, both in terms of production volume and revenue. Tesla is nowhere even close to their legacy automaker rivals. If we follow the trajectory that these companies are on, it seems inevitable that this fact will change. At some point, Tesla's ascent will meet or exceed the level of their competition. But what does that look like and when does it happen? It's a fun idea to think about. And since we just happened to receive information from General Motors the other day that projects their company targets into 2030, it gives us something to use as a benchmark and run Tesla numbers against. Let's see what we can come up with. Okay, so first off, we're just going to be referencing Tesla's vehicle division today. Obviously, they do a lot more than just make cars, but trying to factor in all of the other business ventures like energy and AI just makes this video bloated. And of course, I think we're obligated to say nothing in this video should be considered financial advice or investment recommendations. Please never listen to me on anything finance related. Go check out Dave Lee or HyperChange for good advice. They've got that kind of thing locked down. But if you're down to hang out, have some fun running through hypotheticals, then we're your place. So let's get going. Luckily for us, Tesla has made it pretty easy to forecast out their production volume year over year because they've basically said they expect it to grow by 50% annually over a multi-year horizon, except in the case of extraordinary years when production will grow faster, 2021 being one of those years. So to get a rough estimate, we just have to first assume the production total in 2021 and then just increase 50% every year that follows. We know that Wall Street analysts have set their delivery expectations for Tesla vehicles in 2021 at around 860,000. And we also know that they are underestimating what Tesla can actually achieve because in Q3 of 2021, the actual vehicle deliveries beat the Wall Street estimates by around 20,000 units. Not a small difference. And we know that Tesla is accelerating production into Q4 of this year, including the very strong possibilities of vehicle deliveries coming out of both Giga Texas and Giga Berlin. We had 184,800 cars in Q1 this year, we had 201,250 in Q2 and 241,300 in Q3. That's 627,350 total Teslas delivered accounted for so far this year. If we want to make a projection for Q4 2021, then we can look back to this time last year when there were 180,570 deliveries. I know this is getting a bit heavy on the numbers. Just stick with me. We're almost there. And if we look at the third quarter 2021 versus 2020, we see nearly a 75% increase year over year. So if we apply that same percentage increase to Q4, we get 315,977 cars projected for Q4 2021. And that brings our 2021 delivery total up to just under 950,000 vehicles. But when you factor in the advantage of two brand new factories, even if they aren't hitting anywhere near full speed, I believe that we are going to see more than a 75% increase in Q4 over last year. So I think that it is completely warranted to say that Tesla will deliver a million cars in 2021. And that's amazing because it makes all of our math calculations from here on out extremely easy to do. And just a side note to say like, damn, it's actually crazy that Tesla is going to hit 1 million cars delivered in 2021, considering all that has gone down. Back at the start of this year, 
We were assuming that 1 million could happen if everything goes perfectly for Tesla and they ramp the new Model S and Model X and get two new factories chugging and get the Cybertruck production going. But as seems to be the case lately, pretty much nothing went perfectly. None of that stuff really happened, but they're still going to hit a million cars anyway. So now we just apply that 50% growth factor to next year and we get 1.5 million in 2022, then two and a quarter million in 2023, 3,375k 3, in 2024, and so on until let's say 2030, when we would reach 38,443,359 cars. Hopefully we can put all of that into a cool looking chart or something. Maybe I'll make a chart. Either way, hopefully you're still all following and that makes sense. Now, I realize that 38 million in 2030 is probably a lot on the bullish side of things. We're just taking what Tesla believes their annual growth rate is going to be and extrapolating that out to the end of the decade. Will growth begin to slow at some point in between? Yeah, definitely. So maybe for the sake of being conservative and also to keep our numbers easy to digest, let's just call it 30 million in 2030. And we are using the year 2030 because we just recently got General Motors numbers on where they think their company is going to be in the same year, 2030. And I really want to see how they compare. Again, this is all just for fun. This is not anything you should consider as an investment strategy. According to GM's latest presentation to investors, they plan to double the company's annual revenue to $280 billion by the year 2030. That's based on their current rolling average of yearly revenue, even though they actually lost money in 2020, with just $122 billion, about 11% down from 2019. They blame the pandemic for the downturn, and sure, that's fair to say. Currently, General Motors is valued at $79 billion. The way that GM envisions themselves growing in the future is by increasing their operating profit margins up to 12 or 12%. 12 in 2020, it was 8%. And a big part of the way that they intend to drive higher profit per dollar is through software. See, GM is really gunning to get into the same situation as Tesla is right now, where their value is calculated like a tech company rather than an automaker. So by comparison, Tesla is valued right now at $750 billion. While they make nowhere near as many cars as GM, though just for the record, GM sales per year are on a pretty heavy decline. They peaked in 2016 with 10 million units, then dropped to 8 million in 2018, 7 in 2017, and only sold over 6 million cars in 2020. So they can blame 2020 on the virus, but I don't know what you call the three years prior to that. Anyways, the reason that Tesla gets a much higher market cap is one, because they are growing fast, not contracting, but also because they have other factors of the business with growth potential that are priced into the valuation. Solar and battery storage is a big one. Software like full self-driving and their in-car operating system is another big factor. Their work with AI and supercomputers like Dojo would also be a part of the company value. It's like with Apple. It's not about how many iPhones and MacBooks they sell. That's not what really matters. The company is the sum of many parts that extend way further than the stuff that you see on the shelves at the Apple store. The way that GM thinks they can turn things around for themselves is by pretty much doing what Tesla does right now, selling electric cars and advanced software upgrades for said cars. GM plans to become an all electric automaker by the year 2035, which is great news, absolutely love that and they expect to sell 1 million EVs per year globally by 2025, and then they get a little bold claim that they plan to surpass Tesla as US leaders in EVs, though they don't give a time frame on that point. Again, going back to our growth chart for Tesla, we get 5 million cars in 2025. And just for the record, Tesla's operating margin percentage in Q2 2021 was already 11%. So, you know. But like we said, 
GM plans to do more than just sell cars going forward. They're going to sell software. That amounts to their cruise, super cruise, and ultra cruise suite of driver assist functions. Basically, cruise is like the same advanced cruise control feature you can get in most new cars today. It can follow the car in front of you and does lane keep and emergency braking. Super Cruise is the more advanced self-driving system that you can get right now in more premium GM vehicles like Cadillacs. It's more or less the same thing as Tesla Autopilot, so people like it better than Tesla because you don't have to touch the wheel with the GM system. It seems to work pretty well as long as you are on one of the pre-map roads that are programmed in. Otherwise, it doesn't work at all. Then we get to Ultra Cruise. This is the next generation that will take over GM's premium self-driving software. Again, only available on their fancy cars. And this is pitching itself as level two autonomy that in theory should do pretty close to what Tesla's beta version of full self-driving can do. Ultra Cruise is billed as driving hands-free in 95% of scenarios on a million miles of mapped roads across the US and Canada. GM wants to launch the Ultra option in 2023. Again, comparison time, they currently have 200,000 miles of road map for Super Cruise, so that's a drastic ramp up in their HD mapping investment to get this thing working. GM says that Ultra Cruise will work on a combination of LiDAR, radar, and camera sensors. LiDAR sensors are very expensive, just for the record. That's not going to be great for profit margin. Comparison time. Tesla are in the process of rolling out their latest update to full self-driving that will allow the car to drive autonomously on any road with no need for pre-mapping, probably in closer to 99% of scenarios. Users are paying either 200 bucks a month or a $10,000 lump sum to have the software and it can be installed in any Tesla vehicle made since 2018 with zero need for hardware upgrades and the system uses cheap digital cameras for guidance. They don't even use radar anymore. The other software function that GM wants to roll out is something called Altify, which as far as we can tell is like an in-car operating system that you have to pay extra for and is kind of like Nest for your car, something like that. It's hard to figure out what GM is trying to pitch this as. Here are their own words, quote, Users will benefit from Altify's advanced cloud-based connectivity to seamlessly integrate important aspects of their digital lives. In the future, for example, internal cameras could be used for facial recognition to start the vehicle's engine. Based on route planning and GPS, teen driver settings could be adjusted for extra caution in a school zone, or vehicles could even communicate with a smart home en route to deactivate the security system and adjust the thermostat. If that's the best functionality that they could imagine to sell this software, then damn dude, I don't think that's going to work out for you. So GM might make some money selling bad tech to boomers before they all die out, but on the whole, I can't really see how they plan to get into the same league as Tesla and Apple when it comes to software. But all right, let's get back to revenue. If GM thinks that 280 billion annual revenue in 2030 is something to get stoked about, then where might Tesla be by comparison at the same time? Okay, time for some math again, but we're still keeping this pretty easy to digest. So by 2030, we have 30 million cars delivered. The average selling price of a Tesla car right now is probably 50 grand. We expect that over time, they'll release at least one more affordable car at the 25 grand price point. So that average price will come down, but inflation will still be a thing. So maybe call it $40,000 average selling price. Sound reasonable? And lastly, profit margin per car. Right now, they're at around 25% profit on each vehicle, which is amazing already and will absolutely go up as they continue to find efficiency in the manufacturing process. So let's get nuts and say 35% profit per car. You'll find out why in a second. So we take 30 million times 40 grand and then take 35% of that and we get $420 billion. I shit you not, I did not plan that out. I've just been making up all of these numbers and calculating as we go along, but that must be the right number because it's too much of a coincidence to be wrong. Anyways, 420 billion just from selling cars 
Now let's assume that 30% of those cars have full self-driving attached. And just for convenience sake, let's say the price stays on average at $10,000 and the margin on this must be pretty high. Let's say 75%. So that's an extra $67 billion. Shit, might as well just round that up to $69 billion in software updates alone, just to appease the meme gods. So 420 billion plus 69 billion for a rough estimate of 489 billion dollars in profit for Tesla just from auto sales in the year 2030. Of course, we might be badly wrong on those numbers. In fact, we probably are. But I think we use some pretty reasonable assumptions and even if we way overestimated, we're still significantly higher than GM's best case scenario and that's all we're going to say about that. Let us know your theories in the comment section below. Are we over or under with the estimation? Does General Motors even exist in the year 2030 at this rate? Let's talk about it. For more Tesla news delivered straight to your inbox, make sure to subscribe to our Tesla Space newsletter. We keep you up to date on all things Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and Boring Company in one quick and fun to read package. Link in the description to sign up. It's theteslaspace.com. And make sure to drag our emails over into your primary inbox so we don't get lost in the promotions tab. Also, don't forget to check out our new Space Race channel and subscribe over there for even more space exploration content. As always, if you wanna to continue to learn about everything regarding Tesla, SpaceX, and Elon Musk, we've got two more video options for you on the screen to check out. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it and subscribe to our channel for weekly content just like this.